Um, thank you all for being here. And uh, like many of the other people that serve on this committee, I also serve on agriculture. So this is something I hear about quite often. And when I go back home and talk to the people on my advisory committee and many of my farmers, this is something that I hear the most is about the navigable. And I just gave um, a speech just Monday to the chemical and fertilizer people and crop life. And again, this is something. With the, all this being talked about, I'm curious, how did this happen in the Senate? Is it not talked to the senators like it is to us? <laughs> Does anybody want to answer that? I, I guess I'm just curious. I would, I would try. I, I don't know, but I suspect that the environmental groups in this nation uh, are uh, thirsting for more power, and they have effectively lobbied uh, the Senate to uh, take out of committee uh, this S-787. And uh, our two senators from Arizona were opposed. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. A few other questions. Um, uh, who, Mr. Cruz, if you can maybe help me here, do you think um, the definition of navigable, that is also something that I guess I hear from different people. Some people's definition of navigable is different from all of your definition of navigable. Now, I agree with all of you. I, we don't want to open a Pandora's box, and we don't want anybody encroaching on your property, which is your rights. Um, there's already a backlog. First of all, who, um, what, if anybody wants to give me their definition of navigable, which maybe we shouldn't because we've already heard that you think every pond, even if it's only there for a couple hours a year, would be part of, um, if we took that out, who would then be able to do this if we've already got a backlog of 15 to 30,000 permits I mean who would enforce this and and do you think that this is just a slippery slope because the EPA wants to take over more jurisdiction than you think they should have so if if I could just start with Mr. Cruzy and if anybody else wants to answer that it's probably about three or four questions and we don't have that many much time but basically it's about the slippery slope EPA and and the definition of navigable and how do we even I think you make an excellent point because the backlog is horrible now, and as you say, if we remove the word navigable, the, the backlog will be unconscionable. I think as we've talked here today, it will open the door to third-party lawsuits like we can not even believe. Uh, it encroaches on private property. Um, it's just totally void of common sense. And I think we would all agree that there is logic, as I said a moment ago, in the federal government having oversight uh, of navigable, of real navigable water. And I think our definition of navigable waters, would, we could all get together and come up with a pretty clear definition. Uh, as I said a moment ago, the courts have kind of stretched that out a little bit. But I, we are all just very frightened about what may happen and probably without a doubt will happen if the word navigable is removed. If anybody else wanted to speak on that. I would like to. I think that navigable, as the U.S. Supreme Court referred to it, uh, is the best approach in the Rapanos decision. The one where it talks about even ponds. It has to be a and nexus between a navigable river and the water in question. Correct, correct. Madam Chairwoman, I yield back. Thank you very much, panelists.